Welcome to a TUSD Robotics production. This video is all about notebooking, and we're going to use the example from an Orchard Hills Middle School team 8838A during the 2018-2019 season who not only won the Design Award at the World Championships, but also the Excellence Award at the California State Championship and many more Design and Excellence Awards throughout their competition season. These girls have exceptional notebooking skills and have really mastered the skills of interviewing as well. As you can see, their notebook starts with a team profile description with a picture and then the table of contents, which you can see is documenting their progress on almost a daily basis. There's also an honor code that the coach has created for Orchard Hills and a team bio. So a little bit of information about each team member. They also started with their overall arching goals and challenges that they think they're going to face as a team, including being an all-girls team, and how they might overcome those challenges. Um, so usually whenever we do a notebook, we always want to start off with the design process. And the design process is literally lists what, how you're going to build like your robot. So um, over here we have the um, game breakdown. This year it was Turning Point, and um, we just did a bunch of research on how the field should be played. So you can see here a problem statement is used to start off the game breakdown. So using the game manual, you really look through and find all the rules, the constraints, the criteria, and you describe the game, the obstacles, how to score. This is also a really good place to talk about strategy for scoring and how you, what strategy you might use to play the game. Here you can see a list of robot constraints and also a list of game constraints. Again, you can find all of this in the game manual. You will see the next few pages are possible chassis, lift, and intake or object manipulator designs that students typically use to build a robot to play VEX games. Now, this can either come from a teacher-directed lesson, maybe a website or a resource that was provided for students, um, but it's really important to look at the pros and cons of different designs that they might integrate into their own design, and then they use that game breakdown to figure out which designs they think are gonna work the best. For, um, you have to start strong in your notebook. So you first start with like the challenges in the game and your brainstorming. And then um, you have to, and then the game breakdown. It's really important to analyze the game so you can make the best design possible. So now you will see little booklets that have been taped or glued into the notebook. Um, each student does their own research and develops their own ideas to contribute to the overall design. And then we use different matrices to decide on the best chassis, the best lift, the best intake or object manipulator in order to come up with a selected approach that they are gonna build for their first robot to play the game. I want you to notice the dimensions and the labels on the illustration or the diagram of this selected approach. It is extremely important to put those details, especially when you're drawing your finalized selected approach of the robot you're gonna build. It is also extremely important to give credit where credit is due. And so if you use somebody else's robot as inspiration, please document that in your notebook. Give the URL link, uh, show pictures. Here you can see they've cut out pictures from the internet and they give credit to team 574C for inspiring their selected approach. So now it's finally time to start building and notice the date, it's September 10th. And so we've done quite a bit in just a few weeks of school, but they're not actually building until the middle of September. And they need to get prepared and have materials list. They need to uh, find those materials, maybe cut some metal and get prepared to build. And then once they build, they document their goals for the day. And they also use illustrations with labels to show exactly what they're um, using to build with, as well as images to show how they're building. You will also notice that they have goals for each day and check off when they reach their goals. And you can also see that there are lots of images to support what they have written. So in our notebook, we find it mandatory to write goals at the top so the judges are able to see exactly what you've been working on and what you're trying to achieve. In addition to showing it clearly, we think that you shouldn't 
write paragraph on paragraph on paragraph, um, very long. Um, in your notebook, you should get right to the point, be very like concise in what you're trying to say. For example, right here, it says problem and solution very clearly, so you're able to see. It's not listed in a huge paragraph, so it's hard to find when the judges look at it. Notice here that the problem and solution are highlighted to bring attention to the judges. They are definitely looking for this in your notebooks that you have identified problems and found solutions to those problems. And we also have an illustration that supports what is written in the text on this page. It is also important to include documentation of your autonomous plan and your coding. And so using a picture of the field to show your movements that you plan to code is a good idea. And then once you go to a tournament, it's a great idea to reflect on what happened at your tournament. So after their first tournament, they went back to the drawing board and came up with some new priorities of what they learned. And then they were ready to design their second robot, their second iteration for the game Turning Point. You can see here that the team went back to using individual notebooks for their brainstorming to figure out what design they want to build next. Remember, the design process is iterative, and so you don't go back all the way to define the problem again. That's been done. But we will go back to the brainstorming and developing new ideas phase again in order to plan our next robot. Again, you can see that they have provided documentation of robots that they were inspired from, and they took different angle pictures to help them with their build. As we continue on with the second design, they're talking about modifications that they're making to the robot and adding the Goliath intake with this wonderful image. We find that it's more important to have more pictures than writing because judges love to see pictures and they love all of our personal illustrations instead of us just going on and on about our day and like paragraphs of writing. For example, we had to write our problems and solutions, and for our solutions, we added pictures to give the judges like a visualization when they are reading or skimming through our notebook during um, interviews. Another thing that judges are looking for is a timeline or some time management or goals that you have set for your season. So here's an example of a timeline of a season with the tournaments uh, marked in green and kind of broken down into some major events or things that they're trying to accomplish during the season. Okay, I think a weekly schedule is a really important thing that to include in a notebook because having a planned out week is really important because time management is a huge part of robotics. Like, let's say you have a tournament coming up. You have to learn how to manage your time wisely so that you can get everything done. And it's also important to have your goals planned out for the future and um, so that you can get more done and be more efficient overall. Now these girls ended up having to use the last page of their first notebook to continue their table of contents because they documented so well all parts of the design process. They actually, in the end, ended up with two full notebooks. As this team prepared for the state championship, they scrimmaged against another school. So they, of course, reflected on that scrimmage and the lessons learned there. They also documented uh, who was bringing what to state, their organization and who was responsible for what tools, the wires, very important that everybody knows their role. So we feel like that having a tournament reflection, it would like, it would explain more about like what we did there and what we accomplished. So next time we would know like what we need to improve on and what we would do to be better. And we wrote about our matches, our scores, what we got and um, it helped us like know what we want to do next time. So now as they are preparing for the world championship, they reflect on their state championship win and their matches and they still looked at how they could improve even though they won the excellence award, they're still striving to become even better. They're creating new goals, they're improving their robot, and they begin organization and preparing for the world championship. They also started using some CAD software to design a CAD robot that they printed to bring to the world championship. And the rest is history. They won the design award at the world championships and we could not be more proud. I'm going to give a special shout out to Mrs. Lund, who is the coach of the Orchard Hills Robohawks, who has prepared many teams to be fierce competitors and has inspired many to follow their dreams in the world of robotics and engineering. Thanks for watching a TUSD Robotics production and good luck with your notebooks.